I just bought the Apple Vision Pro. I know. Stop the presses, right? Big whoop. Greg bought an Apple Vision Pro. You can click off the video right here. That's all you need to know. Seriously, I like to preface these videos by saying, you know, we have a pretty sizable tech audience, I would say. Over 300,000 of you have decided to subscribe to the channel for some reason. I know it's not the biggest tech you know, audience out there. There are much, much, much bigger tech channels out there. Honestly, on the grand scheme of things, we're still a pretty small tech channel. But, um, you know, you guys obviously care about my opinion somewhat, and a lot of you tune in for these videos, even when I make them about something as mundane uh, as, you know, buying like an iPhone or a Mac or an Apple Watch or an iPad. Do people even still care about iPads, right? People care about my opinion about why I'm buying something, and it is not every day Apple launches into an entirely new product category. Um, I would say their last major product category was the Apple Watch, and that was about 10 years ago at this point. That is crazy to think about. Time, time really does fly. Um, of course, there's been other products that Apple has announced like AirPods or HomePod, whatever, right? But the Vision Pro is their first major new product category in 10 years. And yeah, other companies have had a crack at either a virtual reality or an augmented reality headset. There's a, there's a lot on the market right now. Uh, but this is Apple's first crack at it. And it looks like they are doing something really unique with it. And the fact that Apple is even launching this product at what looks like, honestly, a very compromised state. This looks like a Gen 1 product. It looks like it's gonna have a lot of problems right out of the gate. But the fact that Apple is even deciding to launch this, I think says a lot. I think they really do think uh, that this is going to be a really important product for them in the future, or at least the start of an important product category for them in the future. Uh, I don't think this thing takes off in Gen 1 or even Gen 2 or Gen 3, right? It's going to take a while for the Apple Vision Pro to reach mainstream success. Uh, but I am really excited about the Apple Vision Pro, if you couldn't tell. Uh, I do think it's going to be an amazing piece of technology. And that's kind of why I want to talk about why I'm ordering one, because I want to tell you some of the use cases I foresee uh, for myself using the Apple Vision Pro and just kind of talk about this product in general. Uh, I also want to tell you some things about the ordering process because, you know, up until Apple put this thing up for order, there were a lot of unknowns about this product. We didn't even know if this was going to have like additional storage tiers when it launched and there was no tech spec page for this thing. Like this was a very, very weird launch for Apple and we have a lot more information now that this thing is actually up and available to pre-order. And the fact that we can now like use the Apple Vision Pro in two weeks when this thing launches, I think is just kind of insane. And I'm really excited to talk about it. So let's do that. Let's talk about the ordering process first. Again, um, you know, I was very worried going into this ordering process. Uh, we've heard so many rumors that there were very limited quantities of the Vision Pro. Uh, There's even like a last minute rumor saying like only 80,000 units were available. I'm like only 80,000, this thing's gonna sell out in like one minute even with that high price tag, right? Um, I feel like that rumor was false. I feel like there was more units than that. Who knows, right? Like uh, no one has 100% accurate information when it comes to how many specific configurations Apple has. But the fact that there were multiple storage configurations, at least to me says there was more than 80,000 units. Maybe that 80,000 units of each storage configuration, that would make a lot more sense to me. Uh, but another thing I was worried about with the ordering process was uh, Apple kind of like did this press release and they said, you know, when you go to buy an Apple Vision Pro, you're gonna need an iPhone. You're gonna need to scan your face with it. Uh, and I was kind of thinking like, well, if there's limited number of units available, am I going to be able to get one? Because I was like picturing a nightmare scenario where the store is crashing, you're, you're going to put your order in and then it's asking you to scan your face and the thing's not launching or it's not loading, or maybe you get like one scan in and then, and then it like disregards it, whatever, right? Like there's like a bunch of things where it's like, this might not be a smooth process. And thankfully it was, uh, basically I opened up the Apple store app at eight, uh, AM Eastern standard time. It opened. Uh, I, I, you know, went to click on the order for Apple Vision Pro. Um, it asked me to scan my face and it was basically just like doing a face ID scan. Uh, you basically held up your phone, moved your head left to right, all that stuff. And you did that two times, very much like face ID. And then it asked you some questions, like if you had like a, a prescription, um, if, if you had like certain vision problems, and then that was it. 
and then you could go ahead and pick your storage tier. Uh, so there was three storage tiers available. Uh, the 256 gigabyte configuration, which we already knew about for $3,499. The 512 gigabyte configuration that we didn't know about, uh, that was $200 more. And then the one terabyte model, which was $400 more. And I think a really cool thing is that um, if you watch my previous video when Apple put up this press release saying that the Apple Vision Pro is out and we didn't know if there were storage tiers coming out, I basically predicted the storage pricing, right? Because I looked at just like what the M2 Max were selling for and how much uh, it cost to upgrade those storage tiers. And this was basically the same on the Vision Pro. So if you watch that video, you basically had this information going into Vision Pro, even though we didn't know if there would be additional storage tiers. The only thing I guess I got wrong was that there was no two terabyte model. You can get a two terabyte M2 Mac. Uh, Vision Pro Max is out at one terabyte. But yeah, I basically put my order in. If you wanna know the configuration I got, I got one terabyte of storage on my Apple Vision Pro. So I got the maxed out Apple Vision Pro. Um, and we'll talk about that more why I got the one terabyte model a little bit later, but let me finish going through like uh, some more details about this ordering process, right? So I basically got my order in and then I learned a lot more about, you know, all these additional things that Apple had in the Apple Vision Pro box and also some tech specs that Apple didn't tell us about before. So just going through this real quick, uh, we knew some of this, right? Like we knew it was a micro OLED display, 23 million pixels, uh, but we didn't really know the exact refresh rate. So it supports 90 Hertz, 96 Hertz and 100 Hertz. We didn't know exactly about the video mirroring specs. So you can actually airplay your Apple Vision Pro to another display uh, for a 1080p output. I think this is gonna be really helpful to kind of show people what you're experiencing in Vision Pro. And I also imagine it's gonna be pretty helpful for me when I'm going to record content on this. So at least there's a way to record what I'm seeing so I can kind of showcase it to everyone watching uh, the channel. Uh, obviously we knew it was going to be an M2 chip, but it's a full M2 chip, eight CPU cores, 10 GPU cores, 16 gigabytes of memory by standard, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, this is gonna be a very, very powerful system. It's basically an M2 Mac inside of a headset and it has 16 gigabytes of memory. So you're gonna be able, this is gonna be a very capable system. You're gonna be able to like edit video in Final Cut Pro on the headset, which is crazy. I, like, I wonder how much I'm actually gonna use that. Uh, obviously we learned a little bit more about the R1 chip. Um, this is like the second chip that Apple has in here. And it has 12 millisecond photon to photon latency and 256 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, which I guess is more than the M2 chip itself. The R1 chip, when I read that, I was like, I'm too dumb to cover this product. What does 12 millisecond photon to photon latency even mean? I guess it means that the uh, latency of what you see being projected back to you is, is extremely low, which is good because if you're moving around with this thing, you need the latency to be low enough. Uh, they also told us a little bit more about the cameras. Um, it's an 18 millimeter lens with an F2 aperture and 6.5 stereo megapixels whatever that means. Again, I feel way underqualified to even be talking about this product. Uh, they obviously talked a lot more about the sensors in this product. There's a ton of them in here. Uh, a little bit more about optic ID. That's how, you know, that's replacing face ID. It's gonna do like a scan of your eye to unlock the device. Uh, all the audio technology stuff is here. Battery life we knew was going to be two hours of general use, but if you're just watching videos on the device, it's actually 2.5 hours. And I like that they even include this little tidbit here that uh, you can use the Apple Vision Pro while it's charging. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not too dumb to review that product. That seemed pretty obvious to me. Uh, so yeah, I think the big thing though uh, that Apple kind of revealed here with this tech spec page was that the the weight is going to be pretty significant. Um, it's going to weigh around 600 to 650 grams, depending on what size you get for the uh, Vision Seal. And you know, to to kind of translate that for my American audience, that's about 1.4 pounds on the heaviest side which is about the same exact weight as a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So that does seem a little bit heavy. Like when you th like think about picking up a, an iPad Pro and strapping it to your face, that seems heavy to me. Um, there are heavier headsets out on the market. I think the um, HTC Vive is heavier than this. So it might not be like the biggest problem in the world. I heard that the uh, head strap that Apple includes, like the one that just goes around your head might be a little bit uncomfortable, but if you use the top strap, it improves ergonomics quite a bit. But I think the craziest part of all of this is that's the headset without the battery inside because the battery is like a separate component. It actually weighs 353 grams on its own. So yeah, this is, this is a pretty heavy system overall. When you, when you calculate both those weights together, it's heavier than that 12.9 inch iPad Pro. 
But that's basically what we've learned about like the tech specs of this. We also kind of saw uh, a better glimpse of what's included in the box. So it includes, you know, the light seal, the solo knit band, uh, the front cover for the device, which that thing looks like a, Pretty nice bra to me, I don't know. Uh, you got the dual loop band, that's the secondary band we talked about. You have the battery, the light seal cushion, a special polishing cloth with Apple Vision Pro embroidered on it. If anyone wants to buy that special polishing cloth for like a hundred bucks, send me an email or comment down below. Um, a 30 watt USB-C power adapter and a USB-C charging cable. Uh, the 30 watt adapter doesn't surprise me. Again, this is basically an M2 Mac strapped to your head and that's what the M2 Macs use uh, for their power supply. So yeah, that's basically all the tech specs that we've learned and, and what's in the box uh, for Apple Vision Pro. Uh, you can even see some of the built-in apps that Apple will be shipping with this device. And it's funny because not all the apps are actually optimized for Apple Vision Pro yet. You can see important apps like Calendar, Home and Maps uh, still aren't fully uh, native to Vision OS. Those are kind of going to be like iPad apps floating around, but I, th I think that's fine for those apps. Okay, so why am I ordering the Apple Vision Pro? Well, I know your first instinct is to go, Greg, you run an Apple channel. You're, you're ordering this thing to get views and to get coverage. And I feel like, yeah, there's obviously some truth in that. I am an Apple channel. I, I do feel like I should cover this. But as someone that has been into technology their entire life, even if I didn't have this YouTube channel, I feel like I would be ordering the Apple Vision Pro on day one. And that might even be contrary to the advice I give you. I, I don't think most people should order this product on day one. And that's because I think it looks like a generation one product. It looks like a flawed product, but as someone that's into technology, I find the unknown of that extremely exciting. The unknown of how will I use Apple Vision Pro? Will I use it for web browsing? Will I use it for video editing? Uh, will I use it to, to watch movies on like a giant movie theater screen? Uh, is spatial video that good that it, that it really feels like a memory and, and going back and watching these memories play out and that you'll, you'll see these spatial videos played out in front of you and you're reliving a moment. Is it that impactful that when you first use it, you go, oh, wow. I need this in my life. This is a feature I never thought I needed, but now that I have it, what an amazing feature. Uh, you know, is it is it going to create a more productive setup, right? You can set all these virtual windows in a space. You can basically have unlimited monitors all around you. Is that a better way to work than using a Mac? Um, is it a, you know, I think a lot of people look at a headset and go, this is a closed off device. It is not a social experience. But you know, when I look at, people in the modern world, when I go out to dinner with my friends and I see everyone like this on their phone, using their phone, heads down, not even looking up at you, you, you can see the disconnect in society right now. Even though these technology products are great and I love them, you can see some of the negative consequences they've, they've had in our society. Is something like Vision Pro, which a lot of people might argue, is gonna immerse you more, the fact that you're even looking up and you can see your surroundings and if people come into your front view, they, they appear in your front view, is that something that will ultimately be less distracting? Will that actually solve our heads down approach to technology? It might, I'm kind of, you know, I like to be an optimist on some stuff and I kind of look at that and if, if I look at the optimistic view, I go, at least you're looking ahead. At least you're more in the moment than head down in your phone, scrolling, nothing in your periphery, right? So Vision Pro, you know, there's so many unknowns with this. There's also unknowns with the technology. Is it gonna be too heavy? Is the battery life gonna be too low? Is it gonna get hot? Is it gonna not perform well? Uh, conversely, is, is that new system where you look at the icons and then you pinch and select them, is that a revolutionary new way to use a user interface? Just like how scrolling was on the iPhone, how like pinch to zoom was on the iPhone. Will that revolutionize the way we think about technology and go, oh, of course, that's the way it was supposed to work, maybe. Again, unknown, but that's what I find so exciting about Apple Vision Pro is all these unknowns and going into it because it's very rare in technology that we get a new experience, a new experience that changes everything. And I would say the last time that happened was the iPhone. And yeah, there's been great Apple products since then, right? Like I love my Apple Watch. I love the iPad. I, I love even things like AirPods, which I think are really revolutionary. But I think the last time we've really had a major shakeup in technology was that last first generation iPhone. But 
like many of Apple's first generation products, that first gen iPhone was probably not the one to get. It was missing a lot of features. It didn't even have 3G. It didn't have an app store. It didn't have copy and paste, right? So there were a lot of sacrifices with that product. There were a lot of compromises, I should say, getting that first generation iPhone, just like how I think there's gonna be a lot of compromises uh, getting this first generation of Vision Pro. But, uh, you know, I I'm excited for it. I, I really am. I, I really think this could potentially be another moment in technology. Uh, I think it might be more similar to the first Mac more than the first iPhone. I think the, the build out of this technology is going to take way longer for the mainstream to accept it, like it did with the initial computer industry where not everyone had a computer for a very long time. It, it took a long time for the computer industry to, to wound up. Whereas, you know, most people were carrying around or a lot of people were carrying around cell phones when the iPhone came out. And then, you know, within like the next 10 years of that, basically everyone was carrying cell phones. And I, I think the iPhone took off very quickly. Uh, I don't anticipate Vision Pro taking off that quickly, but hey, again, it's another unknown. We, we could be very pleasantly surprised. So um, the reason why I ordered that one terabyte model is because the way I view Vision Pro, and I, I think a lot of people are viewing Vision Pro the wrong way. I, I see a lot of people just comparing it to things like the MetaQuest, right? They're like, oh, well, I only need 256 gigabytes because I'm gonna put like a couple apps on there and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use it to watch videos and I'm just gonna use it to play games. And I don't think that's what Vision Pro is. I think Vision Pro can, can do those things and they, and they might be amazing experiences, but I think first and foremost, it is a new computing experience. Um, the way I view Vision Pro is more as a replacement for a Mac and maybe an iPhone, like may maybe like a bit of replacement for both of them. Like you'll spend a bit more time in that than looking at your iPhone. But ultimately I view it as this new computing experience. And I think, you know, you're gonna be spending time in messages, in FaceTime, uh, you know, putting up documents, uh, editing video, editing photos or something like that. It, it could be a compelling experience in Vision Pro. I think it's gonna be a lot better for actual productivity than a lot of the other virtual reality or augmented reality headsets we've seen on the market so far. And that's how I plan to use it. So that's partly why I got the one terabyte model. I'm thinking, well, I use a lot of storage on my Mac. I don't know how external drives are gonna connect to this thing. And if I need to edit a video on this, I'm gonna need a decent amount of storage, right? So I view it kind of as a work space replacement. And th that's partly why I got that one terabyte model, even though maybe, maybe it might be excessive when we finally get to see Vision Pro, but yeah. I'm excited. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, this thing is coming in two weeks. It could be a major moment in technology. We, we don't get to see this that often. It could be a complete flop, right? It could be a complete flop. And that in itself, to me, is exciting. The unknown of this, the fact that it's not a perfected product. I mean, listen, this iPhone 15 Pro Max, there, there can always be improvements to technology, but you look at this thing and it's like, this thing is near perfect. It's a great device. There's there's so little flaws with a modern day flagship smartphone. You look at Vision Pro and you can list 30 things right off the bat that need improvement. It, it needs to be lighter. It needs to be smaller. It needs better battery life. It, 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 it needs to be less heavier. It, it needs more apps, right? Like there's all these stories that Netflix isn't gonna launch with it or YouTube's not gonna launch with it, right? it needs all these compelling things to make it a better product. And that's gonna take years and years and years of, and revision and revision. But don't forget that as someone that's into technology, that's what made the first generation of computers so exciting. That's what made the first generation of smartphones so exciting. They weren't perfect. And every year you got a new one and it was better and better and better and better. And, and it was such an exciting time for, for a technology enthusiast. And hey, I'll be honest, even though, again, I still get excited by the, by, about this technology, about this phone or the new camera features or whatever, it has been a while since I felt this excited about a product. It has been a while since we've had such an unknown from a major technology company. So that is why I am buying an Apple Vision Pro. I'm kind of excited for the unknown. I'm excited for the future. And I hope you are too. So if you are and you wanna see my full review when I get this thing, uh, I mean, I have so much, so much plans for this product that I wanna cover. So if you're excited for that, get subscribed. If you like this rambling from a, from a crazy person, like the video. 
And thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity, honestly. The fact that there's over 300,000 of you subscribed to this channel and I get to cover a first generation Apple product on my channel for one of the first times. I didn't get to do that for the original iPhone. Uh, so to me, I'm excited. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting this be my job. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun year. So thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one.